Hello, um, my name is Julie Beck and I'm an artist with Bowersock Gallery and I wanted to share a little bit about my process for setting up a still life uh, and also just a little bit about how it ends up um, the way it does. Um, so actually what you can see here is uh, the painting that I'm doing is actually the exact same size as what I'm working on. Uh, that method of drawing and painting is called sight size drawing. And so that's my preferred method of drawing and painting. Uh, it makes things very easy. Uh, we do teach it at the Academy of Real Estate Boston where I am an instructor at. And um, to me, it's just a really wonderful way of learning how to see and uh, draw and paint. Um, so uh, I do use sight size for most of my still life work. Um, this still life painting, this is how normally my still life uh, setups work, is I will start with a single color, color scheme or textural um, effect or um, just a challenge in some way. Uh, so this one started with, uh, I went to a clothing swap and this shirt did not fit me, but I really liked the, um, the fabric itself. Um, so, I took it because it was free <laughs> and um, you know I hold on to things I don't use them right away so I was holding on to this for a few months and then um, I you know wanted a new to start a new painting and that was kind of the seed of the setup so what it what I did was I went through all of my junk uh, and found anything that uh, maybe felt uh, similar in color uh, or line or anything that felt like it would uh, work with this pattern, uh, this floral pattern. Um, so I was trying to find like things that were mustard or, or kind of this, this gray color uh, or maybe this maroon color. So I went through everything and I noticed that this, uh, this was a framed print that I had from an antique shop. And I noticed that they kind of felt uh, similar and uh, and then I have like 8,000 wooden boxes and I'm no longer allowed to purchase wooden weathered boxes because I already have way too many. Uh, but this one I, uh, I got here in Somerville, Massachusetts at a really cool little antique shop. And I was like, ooh, this, you know, they got the light grays, the blacks, the reds, um, and it felt like a perfect fit. And so my original idea for, I always tend to put old books in things because uh, there's just a certain quality and I think symbolism to books. I, I'm such an avid reader uh, and I, so I love putting old books into things and I just felt like an object with that would be, you know, really not that interesting. So the book adds a certain amount of depth to it. Um, the Something casting a shadow always gives you an opportunity to create more physical depth because um, you can bring things forward and push other things back. So. Um, I, my original thought was to, you know, there's a horse, I have horse objects. <laughs> so I have horseshoes, I have other horse figurines. So I was playing around with, oh, that that's kind of interesting. Or maybe if I have this going that way and that horse going that way. And um, so I started with that up here, which, um, you know, that's not bad, but it feels kind of too obvious. Um, and really it wasn't that interesting, the horse in front of the uh, fabric really didn't feel that interesting. So I went from that to um, to this and uh, because of the, the dark black um, car. And so I, you know, I put that up there and I was like, well, it's not bad. Um, this feels familiar to me. And I didn't know why I was like, well, this feels like this looks recognizable to me for some reason. Like, like I did this still life before or something. So uh, I have this up there it blended in too much with the background. And so I, so I was like, well, maybe I'll, I'll go on eBay and try to find, there's tons of cast iron uh, cars and things around. So I, uh, I went on eBay and I found a few options. So this one had red and gold and some tan on it, which isn't bad, but still the black kind of, you know, well, didn't look great against the fabric. And I found this one and I was like, okay, well that works perfectly. And while I was waiting for those cars to come in, um, I actually <laughs> realized that um, one of my favorite artists is named Rene Magritte. And he was one of the first artists that I ever learned about um, 
in high school um, and I was just fascinated by the surrealism. I was fascinated by his play of um, the real and the surreal and like questioning the reality of paintings um, and why do you paint realism? So uh, he's just always been one of my favorite artists. And I realized if you look up the painting, he did a painting called The Wrath of the, Wrath of the Gods. And it is a guy on a horse floating above a car going in the same direction. And it was kind of a play on, you know, the, the diminishing role of horse, horses and uh, as a mode of transportation and the car kind of overtaking that. But I was like, holy cow, I've actually made a very similar painting, but in a still life form. And so that was really exciting to me. And that's how I knew it was right. That's how I, I, I always have like this moment that I know like, yep, that's it. Um, and so that was the moment where I was like, yes, this is the painting. So I was really excited about that. Um, so this painting, um, so I'm, I'm pretty much done with it. It's really sunken in right now, which means that it looks kind of gray and matte and that's because it's been drying for a while. Uh, but once it's varnished, the colors will be pretty much identical. And um, so the original painting by Renee Magritte was called The Wrath of the Gods. And I believe I'm gonna be titling this one um, it's going to be called The Peace of Wild Things. Um, I have a list of orphan titles that I haven't used yet for paintings. And I'll usually go through, after I finish a painting, I'll go through and all of a sudden one will jump out at me. And that one, because the original is titled The Wrath of the Gods, this is going to be called The Peace of Wild Things. So that's a little bit about my process. Um, I loved uh, the challenge of doing different textures. So the um, the glinty gold and that uh, that kind of uh, rib texture on the um, the thing here, the flat uh, paper and that old uh, tattered wood is my favorite to paint. So that's a little bit about um, my still life process and how I set them up and how the creative process goes. Bye.